Right, I keep getting asked questions about this, so I thought I'd do a dedicated video on it, and it's gas mask sizes. Because people say, I, what size mask do I have? Firstly, I, if I have no idea what size your head is, and you just say in the comments, what size gas mask do I need, I have absolutely no clue. It's like when people say, I've got a gas mask, can you identify it? Or if you provide me with a picture, there may be, but if you just say, I've got this gas mask, what is it? I've got a filter, what is it? That's not very helpful. But anyway, uh, there are a lot of questions on gas mask sizes, a lot of which isn't easily available to find on the internet, so I thought I'd go into it in the video. And I will say in advance, this is as best as I know it, so if you buy one and it doesn't fit you, don't blame me, I'm trying to help with this. But there's lots of weird sizing things with masks as well. And before I go any further with this, lots of masks you can't find the measurements for online. If you happen to not be able to find measurements for it online, I would advise, and I say this is only advice, don't take it out on me if it doesn't work, unless you have an abnormally big or small head, just to always buy it in a medium size, and that way you can hope for the best if it has adjustable straps that it will fit you. Um, but when an actual gas mask is normally issued to somebody, somebody who is trained to fit gas masks will measure your head in different places, and then they will consult a guide that tells them what size to get for you and then they fit it and check it fits you. If you are buying them as surplus you're not going to get obviously that system. So with some masks there is no information online about what the size difference is between them. Lots of different masks use different sizing. So like a Soviet mask they measure from your chin to the back of your head and that's because of the actual shape of the mask. How the elastic sort of rubber works on it elasticated rubber. Um, if you were going for a NATO mask, that's not necessarily true, because of some of those, they measure your jaw, they measure your forehead, they measure the height of your head, and then with some NATO masks, they have ones in like the same size, but the jaw width is slightly different. So, this is like, as I was saying, you can only use this as a guide. So, Soviet masks are the easiest ones. You can actually find online an image that shows you how to measure from your jaw to the back of your head, and then which size Soviet masks you get. So that's really easy because the Soviets actually did a guide for, you know, the people who went around and said, what size GP5 you'll need? I measure your head. Uh, they had to make it for, you know, like, people who wouldn't actually know it, you know, to do, like, civil defence people or whatever, so they actually made them a guide. So, although it's in Russian, you can find translations, and the Russian is quite easy to understand because there's not much Cyrillic with the actual numbers. So the numbers, you can see what's clearly centimetres, or inches and then you can see which is clearly the, you know, the size you go for so nice easy system to use but as I said with the Soviet mask you get two kinds of measurements you get the number there that's the size uh, Soviet masks are very easy because number one is small or number zero is like small or very small and then when you get to number four or something like that it's very large so two or three is a medium in the Soviet size uh, with Soviet masks, I'd say go for maybe a slightly smaller size if you're not sure, because you stretch them. Uh, that way you get an airtight seal, and if it's a bit too tight, what I've said to people you can do is if you put on a mannequin head or you wear it enough, it will stretch the mask out a bit, and then if it was a bit too small previously, it should now be a good fit. So for example, as I said, everyone knows how to put on a Soviet mask, chin in first, pull up, and you pull it on. And as you can see, it goes from my chin to the back of my head there. And that's how the Russians measure it. And that's the sensible measure, uh, measuring, sort of measurements of the head, because that's how they work. So, Soviet masks, really nice and simple to, you know, do. As said, size, if you're buying it, size 1, small, size 2, medium to small, you know, just regular medium, size 3, medium, large, and size 4, large, something like that. Um, some people have said, you know, they've bought them from sellers where they've requested, you know, as the size is an actual text, and then they've bought one and it's turned out to be totally the wrong size. If that happens, contact the seller. It might be that they're just not very good at sizing the masks. But to actually know what the size of your Soviet mask is, you go by the first number, like 0, 1, 2 to 4, whatever. Um, the Y on there is apparently it means improved mask, but what it really means is the Soviets cut down on the rubber so it was cheaper to make the masks. I have a couple of Soviet hood masks that don't have the Y on, some that do. For the user, there's no real difference, but I think it was a cheapness factor for the factory. Improved as in, they spend less money on the mask, not improved for the wearer. 
but again, at the end user level it won't really matter. Um, so it gets a bit more complicated when we get to NATO masks. Also I'll interject, um, what makes this more complicated is not all of the Warsaw Pact satellite states use the Soviet number system. Um, most of them did, but some of them didn't, and I don't know off the top of my head which did or didn't. I have a feeling that Romania and Hungary didn't use this system, I don't know about Bulgaria. They used what will be the NATO sizing system, or at least the sizing system lots of NATO members used, which is the reverse of the Soviet. Size 1 is big, size 3 or 4 is small. So again, maybe if you ordered a size 2 or 3 of either, you'll get a medium sized mask and it will work out in your favour, but with the British Army, like the S10, size 1 S10 is large, size 4 S10 is small. Um, but hopefully you're buying it from a seller who has actually put the sizes in like small, medium, large, that way. Um, some NATO members didn't do that, some size them conventionally, some put S, M or L on the mask, small, medium, large. Um, and then you get really complicated things like the Scott GSR, which has two sizes, an inner mask size and an outer mask size. So you better hope your face fits them if you're buying them a surplus. Because, uh, for example, the Scott GSR, I, for me, I find that the inner mask's a bit too small, the outer mask's a bit too large, even though they're both in the same size. So there you go. As I said, what would have happened if I'd have actually been issued one properly? Somebody would measure my face with all sorts of different tools and then say, yes, I ordered you a size of this and a size of this. Then they'd fit test it, in theory, if they're doing their job properly. And they'd say, yes, that's definitely the right size for you. Um, as I said, I like just to personally buy a medium mask if it has straps and do the straps up tight and it's generally a good fit. Um, another thing with gas mask sizes is gas masks are generally designed for the ethnic people of a country. So what I mean by that is most of the British Army masks are designed for sort of Anglo-Saxon faces or sort of Celtic, Celtic, you know, facial structures. Uh, German masks will be designed for people with Germanic facial structures. Most of the Nordic masks will be designed for people with Nordic facial structures. Um, you know, there's all sorts of things like that. Apparently Finnish masks are sized slightly differently because the Finns have a slightly different kind of facial strain, uh, shape, you know, stuff like that. Um, but it also means if you, you know, if you're going to places like buying Asian gas masks, um, I don't know if there's any African countries that natively make gas masks, but you'll kind of find that the difference between the Slavic, the Western Europe, and there's actually quite a lot of diversity of the Western European masks, you know that you could potentially know what size you are, but then find the masks don't fit you very well because the jaw shapes are different, the you know head shapes are different, everything like that. So bear that in mind, that if you are not of the ethnic group the mask was designed for, um, so if you, for example, like I said, the Avon mask fit me absolutely fine because I'm, you know, Anglo-Saxon, partly Celtic. If you're um, a native Brit, then the masks are designed for your facial structure that you normally will have um, because of genetics. If you're not and you buy the mask somewhere else in the world, you might find the mask not very comfortable fit. So I keep saying about the Draeger M65 and a lot of people have this problem. For a lot of people, the air leaks around the chin. And that's simply because the shape of the chin the mask was designed for must have been very common in West Germany. It's not so common everywhere else, apparently. So you get air leakage around the chin and there's not like a strap near the chin you can adjust. So you, your option is either to make the mask uncomfortably tight to make a good seal that way, or not to use an M65. And it's the reason why some of the other masks have the little inner flaps in them a bit more to try and make a better seal if your uh, head doesn't totally fit the mask. So, there you go. This is rambled on a bit, but that tells you how to find the size of a gas mask. I'd mostly say go for medium unless you have a normally big or small head. Always go for medium. And, you know, that's how the sizing works, but it doesn't always work that way. Some places use small, medium, large. Some places reverse the numbers. Some places use loads of numbers. I think that might be on my Czech Civil Defence masks. They go up to like something like size 7 or 8, and it's just because they have so many different sizes. They're not, there's not much between each, you know, number next to each other, but a size 1 to a size 8 or something is an incredibly big difference in sizes. But there you go. That's roughly how gas mask sizes work, and hopefully this video is useful for maybe explaining, uh, you know, how you're meant to be measuring your head and everything else to get one of these things to uh, fit you properly.